Hello and welcome back to Shiggly Shed Motors. Currently, I am not in the shed. I am sitting in my 1954 Dodge C Series pickup truck. Now, a few weeks ago, I was at the Scottish Motorbike Show and we got um, Musashi on show for the first time. Got some great feedback really cool to show everyone the bike that I've been working on for the last best part of a year um, and I also managed to meet up with some cool people, meet up with some people that I've only ever talked to online which was pretty cool against my you know my parents sold advice I've never talked to strangers you met online but um, this this went well <laughs> so as you can see I'm wearing my uh, BJ Brickhouse builds um, cap because he came over from America which was awesome I also got to meet Johnny Hull for the first time. Yeah, just a great time. Uh, if you haven't checked out my uh, Summary of the Weekend video, um, it is the last video I uploaded, so you'll be able to go check that out. Now, why am I sitting in this truck? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this truck before. Um, it's basically been a bit of a silly purchase, but also quite a fun purchase um, to kind of break away and get a little bit of respite from working on um, Musashi because Musashi was kind of would hit quite a few stumbling blocks the front end and that kind of thing um, this is fogging up really badly isn't it um, <laughs> yeah so we hit a few stumbling blocks and um, I had a little bit of money set aside for something silly like this and this basically came up for sale and I couldn't resist um, I just thought I might show it show it on the channel a little bit about it because I've not shown it on the channel before I know that this is primarily a motorbike building channel but at the end of the day um, I know a lot of my viewers might be interested in, in this little side project I've got going on so I thought I might give you a little bit of uh, an update on what I've been doing to it what I've done to it so far and what I plan to do it in the future Alright as I said, this is a 1954, registered in 1955, Dodge C-Series pickup truck. Now, this was imported from California, uh, I think about six or seven years ago. And then it was sold to someone up in Aberdeen. And they didn't actually manage to do the work to it that they were hoping to. And they ended up part exchanging it back to the guy who imported it for another vehicle and then that's when I came into the picture and I fell in love with it and I bought it so basically to give you a rundown when I got it the guy from Aberdeen had taken the the bed off and had it stored upside down open to the elements which was a bit of a shame because it actually contributed quite a lot to the rust uh, as you can see obviously it's pretty patina um, patinaed all over but at the end of the day that's kind of the look I really like about this truck and it's one of the reasons I bought it so I'm going to try and preserve that as much as possible things like this worn away where someone's been working on, in the engine bay I mean you can't you can't make that kind of patina up so that's that's cool and I don't want to get rid of that yes I could completely respray the thing and, and hot rod it and whatever but I just don't think it suits it suits my style and at the end of the day, it's a 68 year old truck and I want it to look like that. Right, let's go back to front. I've powder coated the bumpers, um, done the, the paint for the, the Dodge um, embossing on the back tailgate. I've reinstalled turn signals and stoplights, um, made up some new chains, clips for that. It's got new shock absorbers, the original leaf spring suspension as well. I've treated all of this metal in the bed, I fixed a bunch of uh, holes that had developed in the tubs and um, resprayed them and reattached them with some nice stainless hardware. Uh, whole back, uh, the whole chassis um, I should say has been uh, rust treated and sealed with uh, Lanagard. I've redone all the brake lines as well and the fuel lines. Um, wheels have also been powder coated and uh, they're quite handy because they're Land Rover size wheels so it's got um, 
Wrangler, uh, Goodyear Wrangler tyres on it, so looking pretty chunky and cool. Again, I had the steps powder coated, fuel cap, had the front bumper powder coated too, uh, and then I've rewired the whole thing, reinstalled all the glass with new seals, um, and if we go into the cab, I upholstered a, a seat for it, a bench seat. It's not the best job in the world, but it will do for this. Uh, maybe fancy a slightly nicer upholstery at some point, but that will do in a pinch. Uh, like I say, rewired everything, so the gauges have all been rewired. They're, they're LED backlit as well. Um, got my turn signal switch. I've treated the whole uh, footwell and floor because that was getting a bit rusty. Um, these trucks are actually never that well water sealed, weather sealed. They never really were designed to be. They were kind of farm trucks in California, so um, it didn't need to be super waterproof. Uh, so there are a few leaks here and there. Um, so that's why I've treated all this uh, so it can kind of it can bear that. Uh, got my vintage toolbox because inevitably. If you own a vintage vehicle, you're gonna need some tools. Uh, the cigarette lighter over here is original to the truck, um, but I don't smoke, so I thought I might not might switch it out for a little USB plug, which I thought was a pretty cool little stealth upgrade. Another stealth upgrade under the, the grill here, which I think where the heater originally was, I've installed a Bluetooth speaker, just for a bit of comfort. Uh, ply door cards have been painted black. Also made up um, new handles uh, for the window winders because they'd kind of fallen apart and broken off. So made up them out of some nylon. Uh, head cloth done terribly. Let's not look at that too well. <laughs> um, and a, a little internal light as well installed. I've also made up this silly stack exhaust and it's got a little flap on the end of it like a tractor just because why the hell not um, I do have the wood for the bed and that's actually a job I need to do today is treat a bunch of the wood um, before I reinstall it into the bed it's brand new wood all the channeling has also been powder coated New headlights, they're the original surrounds, uh, they're just standard 7 inch headlights but these are for UK roads because obviously this is an American truck and the beam pattern would be pointing the wrong way. Also a uh, Lucas Spotlight that I picked up on eBay, just I thought it kind of fitted this aesthetic quite well and new wing mirrors to boot. Under the bonnet we have uh, flat six. Now I know a lot of people out there will say that a truck like this needs a big stinking V8 and I'm inclined to agree with you. However, <coughs> this is the original engine. It's a flat six um, I think it's around about three litres and it's kind of, it, it will do just now. I would like to put a V8 in it at some point. This engine bay is enormous. You could fit pretty much any engine you wanted in here. Um, big Cummings diesel or something like that, that'd be fun. <laughs> um, yeah, V8 will be cool at some point, but I, I'm not in a rush. And I'm not planning on getting rid of this truck anytime soon, so it's uh, an ongoing project, and that's something to think about upgrading at some point. Like I said, I've rewired the whole thing. So it's got a fuse box, air horns, because air horns. Um, new coil pack with uh, ballast resistor, new HT leads. This is a pretty smart little bit of kit. It is to, it's called a dynamator. It's a stealth alternator, so it's meant to look like the original dynamo, but it is actually a modern alternator with um, regulator, voltage regulator built in. Uh, I, the reason I put that in is because I've upgraded the whole electric system from a six volt to a 12 volt system, um, just a bit more modern. Got a new fan belt, new water pump. Uh, this kind of caused me some problems with thermostat housing. Obviously you can never bloody get thermostat housing for a truck this old, at least not easily, so that's been a bit of a temporary bodge repair, but it does work and it holds water and that's the main thing. And like I say, if I'm going to upgrade the engine at some point, I'm not going to spend too much money on this engine. Um, yeah, carb's been rebuilt by myself, um, just an easy straightforward single carb. Uh, air filter again has been had to be service. Um, yeah. 
not a hell of a lot else to say to be honest. They're really straightforward these engines and they, they sound great. Um, don't sound quite as good as a V8 might but like I say it's the original engine and that's that's got to be worth something right. But yeah, at the end of the day it's just a cool truck and I've wanted an American truck like this for a long time and this opportunity came up I had a little bit of fun sitting there so I thought you know you only live once it's also just a cool thing to have parked in my drive I'll be honest you will notice from this angle the colour match that I got for the wheel arches isn't great however how on earth are you ever going to colour match something this patina and faded in different places so it's kind of the best I could get and what I've done is I didn't prep the metal um, that amazingly kind of because I want the paint to start flaking and start rusting again and then it will hopefully start to blend I might even go over it with um, some like wet and dry paper to try and kind of fade the paint a little bit and try and make it match in but I'm not too fussed um, maybe a respray at some point in the future if the rust gets terminal uh, but until then it's, it, I'm happy enough with it to be honest now it's the beginning of April and it's a good forecast for a few days so I thought it you know strike while the iron's hot make hay while the sun shines etc etc I'm gonna actually try and get the wood for the bed treated the reason I've not done it up until now is because I've just haven't had any a, a big enough indoor space to do that um, and like I say the, the weather's been a bit questionable so I don't really want to risk treating a bunch of wood just for it to get rained on um, straight away so I'm going to do that today forecast the next couple of days like I say is pretty good so if I don't get it all done and dry today that's no issue um, I cut all the wood to size fitted it all into the truck bed and it's it's all pretty much ready to go it just needs treated and put back in finally with a bunch of stainless fixings and then that will kind of be the truck finished for just now uh, which I'm quite excited about and hopefully it can sort of trundle about in it and uh, get a bit of use out of it so let's get the wood out let's get some treatment out and let's do that Okay, I'm going to be using this Roxil Wood Protection. It's a water-based silicon uh, wood preserver stuff, uh, waterproofing agent. The reason I'm going to use that, hello cat, say hello to the cat, this is the cat. The reason I'm using that is I want to provide a real base that soaks right into the wood for waterproofing and then I'm also going to yacht varnish the top of it. Um, just for appearance and also additional waterproof protection because around here, especially in Scotland, wood doesn't last long out in the elements. No pussy cat. It's all treated now with the uh, Rocks Hill stuff. Um, it's sort of tacky on my skin, so I suppose it's sort of drying into a water repellent layer. Um, once this is all dry, as you can see, it's a nice sunny day. Hopefully, it won't take too long. I'll be able to spray it with yacht varnish, and that will be the finishing finish on the wood. Then it can all be reinstalled in the bed of the truck with stainless hardware, completing uh, completing this stage of the truck's restoration.
So all the wood is now had undercoat and three top coats of yacht varnish. These are the powder coated channel strips. All I need to do now is drop the stainless coach bolts through all these bolts, all these holes, sorry, and then bolt it all down. And that's the truck bed done. Well that's all the bolts in, all 50, 60 odd of them, that took quite a wee while, but that completes the truck bed. Well, I hope you didn't mind that little digression from the usual content. I uh, just thought I'd show you the truck. Um, I'm quite proud of it and it's uh, fun to drive and it's yeah, it's just a sort of silly little toy but it's one of these things that I've always wanted and now I've got it, I uh, can't see me ever getting rid of it. Anyway, um, hopefully the next episode we'll be moving back towards our usual territory involving motorbikes. Um, and I hope you're looking forward to that. As usual, please do give me a like, leave me a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the Sugly Shed channel. I will see you very soon. Another episode coming up shortly. Take care. Goodbye. Um, just for appearance and also additional waterproof protection, because around here, especially in Scotland, wood doesn't last long out in the elements. No pussycat. <laughs>